Okay. I'm going to start off. Um, uh, I'm going to be teaching you guys about typography. Some of you can hear this. Uh, I'm going to teach you about harmony, text composition, uh, and like how like text can work with the background and the artwork, and, and they complement one another. But I want to mean, like, I want to highlight the fact that it's complementing. Don't take text as a complement. Take the text as an added value to the actual artwork itself. Uh, Thinkswing gives the artwork a proper equilibrium. Sometimes placement helps a lot with the artwork. Like we, like in the empty spaces, text can like be a perfect thing to help the artwork to become something else. First and foremost, the property itself is an art. Like people have to treat it as art, like artistically. Like, the way we see the property in the art world is not that great. It's just like make the logo bigger, make the logo smaller. Of course, you guys get hurt of this. Uh, it shouldn't only, like what I said, it shouldn't only complement the artwork, but it gives the artwork a better added value. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ali Shahan. I'm a senior art director slash designer slash artist slash probably something else is going to come along and I'm going to slash myself. But uh, I've worked with the international art agency called BPDO. Uh, we have clients like uh, Pepsi in the Arab world. We have Oridu. I'm sure all of you heard about it. Uh, also, I work with the with a gallery in Dubai and Saudi Arabia called Al uh, Yam. Yeah, I've uh, showcased my work with them from time to time. And at the same time, I worked uh, in the fashion industry for a professional marketing for a certain amount of time. I worked with the I'm sure you have heard of the name art, which is the brand called the Dangies, which uh, I'll show off. Like I'll show off now because I remember like show off yourself. So I'm gonna show some of my work. Here. See the color correction, now it helps. Okay, so I just want to say that I like to incorporate in the Arab like the Arabic touch to all the artwork all the time. I feel like we need I like I like to find my Arabism even in the most English places. Like when we're in uh, when we're in London this we've showcased much, much Arab. Like that's the thing that we work in, something called Edge of Arabia and Saudi Arabia where we show, uh, show off Arabic talents and not by you using English artworks or pop art. We, we're more into the calligraphy, we're more into the tashkid. We did this. So here is one of the pieces which, which was in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. It's called Haram Halal. I worked on it when... Uh, uh, this was in Ayam Gallery in Dubai. And uh, it meant that, that how you see it's like this whole Arabic thing going on and it was, uh, it was like... It was showcased in a lot of people, in a lot of places where people see it in, and they didn't understand Arabic so well. But they see the composition and you see how I'm telling you, this is not simple, just text on here, but this is installment art. We worked on like foiling paper and we worked it into look like a paradigm of, of a, like an, a never ending circle. As well as that, I worked with the store. I'm sorry, this is an ethic gallery. This is a, you guys can see, or should I zoom in? This is a piece, and I say, like I always say, text helps a lot when it comes to uh, my artwork. I love putting text in artwork. Some people don't believe in that, but I believe in putting text in artwork all the time. So here was it like a making fun of like all the new like superficial stuff. So I said, "Be a Fairuz in a world full of Nancy Algernons." And this was in the Asad Gallery. We uh, this was a poster print on silk screen, uh, plexi, and not in home. As well as that, I worked with a store called Useless. So at the same time, we work with a, with a store called Comte de Garçon, if you guys heard about it, some, some friends. Uh, we worked on the Chilaxco, uh, Chilaxco that was sold in London. And it's, uh, it's also written in Arabic. I'm telling you, I just like Arabic and Tishkid a lot. And at the same time, now you get it. This is Dying Beats, where, where people have been wearing this t-shirt all the time. And we made, and I made fun of it. And actually, Dying Beats appreciated the fact that I made fun of it. They say, Nino Waifi. So in, in the Saudi Arabia, they say, Mahra, as in, I'm your man. So I'm like, I'm not your man either, so ain't no matter. We were going okay. First of all, I'm going to start, I'm going to go up here. I uh, need to say something. I'm not, I'm very old school, so I'm going to go back and forth from the presentation to the pictures. I don't like always sticking the pictures inside the presentation. So. Okay. So first question is, what is harmony? What do you see as harmony? Something goes. Um, what they, what's it? Something easy on 
the eyes. Sure. When two things go together, it's not beautiful. Perfect. What do you feel like harmony is? Exactly, it's very easy on the eyes, like you said. I like, I believe in that, so I'm like, I believe in harmony is something that's very aesthetically pleasing when you say something. Here's when the, the tech, but like when I say harmony, I say like when, when it comes to our type, it's an essential to the artwork. It, it, it gives the artwork the harmony itself. Uh, one of my friends was show, supposed to show up. Uh, he's coming in a bit late. Uh, his name is Patrick. He worked on typography and harmony, and he worked on that project for a year and a half from Google Map Kuwait, and he created letters or fonts from the, from the actual buildings of Kuwait. From and I'll show I'll show you I'll show you in a bit. This is uh, this is when we were in Lebanon. We did with this with this uh, graphic design studio. We wanted to do something a campaign for uh, Beirut. So we did this. And this is when I'm going to start demonstrating what harmony is when it comes to our work itself. This is a piece for Beirut, and as you see the font complements the artwork. You need the font for the artwork. And this is, uh, we took photographs of Beirut because we were talking about coexistence of Islam and Christianity. So as you can see, Qubit the Masjid and the Salim and the Sih. However, what I want to highlight is, you guys know what is a sans serif and a serif font is, right? This is serifs, but this is very easily, like, you need to choose, you need to be wise when you choose serifs, because serifs sometimes can be very bulky, very annoying, and not very nice when it comes to it. So if you see the serfs are very light and not on, on all letters, you always have to re rework the letters. Don't let them look like they are. I, what I do is something called uh, legibility. I love something called legibility. I want to do is like, like squeeze letters in the, each other. And I don't like the spacing a lot between the letters. Sometimes I let the letters touch. I don't care. I like the fact that they look artistic when you want to see them. Not just because people people should read. Not It doesn't have to always be easy to read. People should read. Okay, and then the other work. I want to say how typography itself can be the artwork itself. And I've done this poster for uh, us fun. Remember the YOLO phase where everyone started saying YOLO? And it was uh, kind of annoying. So it was made out of neon lights. And this is, by the way, typography. This is not really neon lights. And it says, one girl to stop saying YOLO. Ask them to show the porn. And you see how this is, a, this is two different fonts. But you don't go with ser sans serif font. You go with a sans serif font here because it helps because when it's the serif font, it's going to be so annoying to look at. And it's so, you know, it's so easily composed. And when I'm talking about, you see how harmonious it is, it khalas, it's just nothing is standing out, nothing is, everything goes, flows together. This is one thing. I'm going to talk about something else now. I asked about harmony, and, uh, and someone said it's easy on the eyes. When I believe in harmony itself, I believe in one word. And if you like quote a dictionary, I mean, The second you Google something called harmony, like harmony, the first thing you get is your balance. So I'm going to be talking about something called balance. Remember, I'm talking about spacing. The spacing comes all the time. This actual spacing between each letter is actually an added 2.5 two, two fonts in between. 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Then you get what I mean. But it, however, however spaced it is, it's still balanced. I want to uh, show, like, there was a graffiti post I did in uh, Beirut just this year. And how you look at the artwork, that you look at the space before you put any text, and you look at the space and you see how you can make it, how you can make it into something. Uh, remember the song we found love in a, in a hopeless place. We were in Beirut and we felt like we could do something with graffiti, and we said we made art in a hopeless space. And you see what I mean by space? I found that when I was graffiti, I realized that I lost the wall, there's another different wall, so I believe that if with the different wall I can do a different font. And that's what I did right there. And here's a project we did for Hamra II that came back here. And I say, uh, when I say balance, I'm not talking about symmetry. 
not necessarily symmetry. But you see the art, like this is not centered, this is not either, but it held the artwork itself. We did it for the Hamra, it was a, was a stand up comedy show. And it was the highest stand up comedy show. So if you see how we gave it, uh, we wanted to give it the whole Renaissance meets graffiti feel, so that's what we did. We got a statue, it was great on it. Then we, by the way, you don't have to take, you can all take the presentation, with them. don't worry about it. Uh, the height and see, it's two different fonts, but still they complement each other. And something I hate, and everyone's going to ask you, in the graphic design world is the logo. And they're always, they're always going to ask you to make the logo bigger. Don't believe them. Tell them it, it works. If it's making, it, tell them it's ugly if you make it bigger. Always convince them that it's ugly when you make the logo bigger. If the artwork is nice, the client will believe that this is how they present themselves in the end of it. It doesn't have necessarily have to be the logo. To, to like it has, like sometimes when I've done something, when someone asks me to do the logo, I simply take the logo, put it here, move everything, tell them here, here's your artwork if you want. Uh, who've seen the the ad that we posted me in Sudab yesterday for the workshop today? It's literally the because of the the way the tape this is the text is placed in the art in the on the artwork itself, it looks nice, it looks clean. It doesn't it's very easy on you to read. And it's very nice to read, however, like some thoughts of like the line and I, by the way, I believe that line is always in my stuff when it comes to branding. I always use lines for no reason. I just use lines. So it's just some random text based idea. I've done it fun, like a piece back in the day got really popular on the internet, which was this one. People get any image and they post, they get like a picture of a sky and post it. So what's funny is yesterday, we posted, me and me and Sid, we posted something called uh, just some random text written on the cloud. Then someone tags me in this photo. And I found it very funny when they tagged me with this. I had to share it. I couldn't. I always say like people say something really like very rom romantic on the cloud. So I found this. Dawat al hub habiba on placed on clouds. It's the same thing. I hate this. I hate the placement of random stuff on skies and writing a very love note. I believe that this is if you just learn Photoshop, this is what you're gonna do. And I hate that. So this is what I wrote. Like, have the movement. I've seen it in a lot of galleries. People literally, when uh, when we take in portfolios for uh, new galleries, people actually just send me literally text on a on a like on any picture. I was like, this is not art. Or like take a picture and like do a double it and write and write something like any random word. So I always say this is not art. After that, I want to talk a lot. We're gonna like like gonna go crazy a bit now. And this is where the workshop is gonna start. There's two powers to everything, the kashida. Who knows what a kashida is? All right. By the way, always use a kashida. Kashida will help you a lot in the in the, when it comes to Arabic and English together. It's gonna help a lot. I'm not sure how. Uh, this is an artwork we did for. Uh, It's supposedly uh, something I'm going to be proposing in Kuwait very soon. It's an art gallery I'm going to be proposing in Kuwait. So we were making fun of superheroes of the, the Arab world. And you see, I said Cyclops, the guy that always says Shrik Tis. And he loves it. What is Kashida? This is a Kashida. Asalo. Hmm? So it's the real name for it is called the Kashida. Okay? I always use it. And I always said, like, Captain America would be Buhalpa all the time. So this is how it looks like. I'm telling you, every type of is the most gorgeous thing ever. So the Kashid is basically what I believe to be called a tatui. And again, always use the Arabic type of Like Arabic fonts will always help you demonstrate your message. The tatui, you get it. It's a joke, it's <laughs> supposed to be a joke. Uh, I've done Tatwil as well. Uh, uh, this was uh, for a city on Saudi. We were making fun of dramatic issues. So there were two things. There was this um, saying that uh, here. This is one of the first things. Can anyone read this? And read it from the top to bottom. 
it's a very dramatic saying for guys. Do you want me to read it for you? Yeah. It says you feel me, bro. You feel me, bro. And I, I'm like, this is what I like doing with Arabic. I always like mixing again. So it's you feel me, bro. It's like, and then there was this uh, very famous saying for girls. They always use it whenever it goes to like love life is going like straight. They say the alam fa the alam fa the ghayat. So I I made fun of it by saying the alam fa the alam fa the ghayat fa the alam. The alam is actually I'm thinking about it. And this is what I mean by tawil. Tawil helped me here. If you can see how I created a perfect balance, helped me here. And when I use the ta, ta is usually short when it comes to this kind of font. This is called a it's a Persian font. Wow, it's an aesthetic font, sorry, uh, which is a Persian font. So their t their ta is very small. And the data, I tell you, I always like to play with font. That's why I'm very unorthodox when it comes to Photoshop and Illustrator. I don't like sticking to the font at all. I like playing with it a bit more. And I told you the lines will always be part of my artwork. And I told you I always keep lines. It looks like we wrote it down and like we rubbed it off. This is how I keep it. How it would have what helped me here is to demonstrate the message even stronger. It's something that's called tashkil. Tashkil helped me like. The, the, the word became more dramatic because of the shkid. For the this is what I'm saying. This is very dramatic when it comes to the girls. Okay. Which brings me to the second power that's going to be very helpful to the, the typography, which is the shkid. This is the two things that I always, when someone tells me what you like doing, like the kashida and the shkid, always helps out. Okay, so there was this funny meme I found online, and I loved it, and I would, it was sad that I didn't come up with it. And it, just the tashkil how it helped the, the message be so strong. It's not you, it's me. It's, it's just, just the tashkil changed everything. Instead of writing, ya wa, or you, it's just, ya ma, ma, just ma, dammit, and me, ma, kasa, that's it. So, here is where I went crazy with tashkil. I demonstrated the shkid to move from actual tashkid to actual birds itself. You can see that the shkid continues off into the birds I can work. And it's a very famous method of Kuwait, uh, Kuwait sorry, the Arab was called the Tugur al So it's literally what I was trying to demonstrate. This was a tattoo for one of my friends. He was, uh, he wanted to get uh, uh, this. And uh, look how the tashkid made it look like a perfect block. And if you can't read it, it's right there. How can I call it with the This is fun, exactly, I'm telling you, it's so easy, it's not that hard at all. And you know when the new famous saying, you can't sit with us? Mm -hmm. So there was a poster we made for, I made for a friend of mine, it was her birthday, so I had to make her this, uh, you can't sit with us post. So I, uh, I want to say something funny about this. One of, one of them is half Indonesian, half uh, Saudi, and one of them is uh, half Indian, half Saudi. And we're all English, and at the same time we're all Arabic, so I have to put this picture up. This is me right there. All right, you can't sit with us. That moment, my Indonesian friend gave me the whole Asian head of font, and my Indian friend gave me the whole Indian font for it. But you see, always, everything complements Arabic. Always believe in Arabic is the strongest font ever. I used to study with calligraphers, but I, st I taught calligraphy myself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to the presentation. And then there's two things I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to probably start working on some stuff. Of course, Parra. You guys know what Parra is. We talk, we talk. However, now people more and more, me too, I stop using 7 and 6 and 3 in my, uh, in my, in my typing. I type in Arabic. I like typing in Arabic. I discovered my Arabism very late, so I love typing in Arabic now. And some people might find it very illegal or in Saudi we call it Arbaji, but we love, I like typing in Arabic all the time. Even when I want to say law, I write Google. Great, I love <laughs> writing that. And uh, I actually, two of my clients actually, got, we, got, we, we, we use that Arabish in our work. I've used it with a lot of clients. Yeah. The comedy hangout. Too, was for also gas events. 
it's, it's an Arabic font, font that we flipped around and made it look like English. And it's literally with Tashkid and everything. We use it with branding. This is more branding on the same, uh, the same show. And this is one of my favorite. It was for useless. This was in, uh, in Jeddah, in London. T-shirt. And of course, I love using Tashkid. I told you Tashkid will always complement everything. This is how it works out. English and Arabic look perfect together. Look, what I did here is, if you see the Arabic, it's very serif. We don't see it, but it's there. It's the serif. So here, my font's actually serif. It's not just simple font. It has this whole serif. Always look for those details. They help out a lot. And last but not least, before I go into the workshop, I just want to show you more client, like, like client-based things. And who knows Nukhat? Heard of Nukhat, huh? Well, now I'm a frequent collaborator with Nukhat. Uh, we did this thing called Daurai. Yeah. yeah, this was my branding for the show. Uh, I went all crazy in the English and Arabic thing, and I used, every, on purposely used every single graphic design skill element you will ever use. For instance, using a block under your text just to show it off. Did all that. With all this thing, I was trying to. I still, I was still able to keep it clean and not very annoying to the eyes. And the artwork had to be simple. Our last call for artists, we did the same thing. This is a technique I, I told you. I'm, I'm, I love geom geometry and uh, these lines up a lot. And this is my famous, uh, my my favorite artist called Munir Fatmi. He's Moroccan. He studies in, uh, in London. His work is all about geometry and. And the Arabic calligraphy, and he's in London. Okay. He used all his work, all about London. His famous piece was uh, a Quran, a Quran that had sticky notes on it, and it's called "I Want to Understand." He's he's one of the most smartest people I've ever seen. And uh, for Aridu, there's this uh, there's their new privilege uh, of people for VIP customers. They're called the Nukhba. So here, that's simple. It had nothing to do with calligraphy or anything. This is all typeface. You just play around a lot with it. And then this is how you can come up with it. Another one for the but we did this. I said they went with that one in the end. We use all different headers. What they they ask for elements, and a lot of people are always ask you, ask you for an element in their in the logos. I hate that. I like the logo to be only text. But even with the element, we were able to do that diamond element for Nusba, the diamond people. And they the, what happened is with the Ridu they have they have two things. They have the diamond and the circles. So we were trying to create a new diamond just for the Nukhba people. Here, I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate for you something real quick on how to create, like how easy it is to create something that is very complicated. I'm going to try to write my name in, uh, in a font I gave you guys, which is, which is uh, the Duke of Thuluth. So. And Ayn. And then Ayn is very simple. And I don't like this. Name. However, if you ever add a Kashida and give the Ayn again, Look how the end looks like. Hello, but this is the end of a letter, not the beginning of a letter. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy it again. Give it the normal name. Okay. Give it another color, just so I know the composition of it, and move it on to it. You see this? Hello, you guys, are you familiar with the masking tool? It's so easy, even if you're not familiar with it. It's really easy to use. Mask both those two. And what you happen with mask is you can re-erase something. If you feel like you made a mistake, you can re-bring it again. Yeah. What I'm going to do with this. I'm going to keep the bottom part. I want to keep the bottom part. And then the top part, I'm going to remove. Link it to the lamp. So I'm going to copy this again.
also Kishida will always have a Hagen because I don't want the Midla Kishida will always have you with that yeah. I got this now and then just place it easily with it it's as easy as that and the last one I want to use is something that people use yet, right? But I'm going to use something else, and it's there. Also, people really don't know how to use it, like, don't see it, which is this. It's called the. I keep forgetting its name, but it's, it's always that. Like, it makes something much better for you. I'll show you. This is the technique I always use whenever I'm, whenever someone asks me to do something like calligraphic or typography. And it looks very messed up, right? And look how easily you can clean it up. Always look at the lines to see what I'm trying to figure, figure out here. Hmm? And it's literally all pass. All you have to press is all that. Yeah, I'm going to rub the lamp. And again, I'm going to give them both a masking tool. And here's where the fun happens. See how many times they're going to cross over. Some people can leave it like that. They want to leave it like that and just put two dots. I like to always look, at, make it look like they're interwining. So here, I'm going to remove this part. Place the, the 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 dots the way the I like I like to go wild with the way I place my dots. So here I'm gonna place them. One, two, sorry, two, and I'm done. It's not that hard. It was never that hard. What do you think? Nice. <laughs> it's that easy. Uh, we have an hour or so. Like I want you guys to try something very a bit difficult. But I think you can all do it, and of course I'm going to help you out. I want you to design one of the things I designed for a photo, for a movie that uh, it's uh, it's both by, from Dubai and uh, Saudi. It's for a dance called the Mizmarji, which is people dance around fire with, with sticks. Sometimes people get injured while dancing like this. It's a very savage dance, but they still do it in the Bedouin areas. So guys, I want you to design this for this one. Can you guys? Do you think guys you can do it? Just want you to design this. One. It's not that hard, I'm telling you from now. Miss Mel G. Exactly. Same thing. It's the same logo we used everywhere. Same thing. Alright. 
I gave you both all the fonts and I gave you the the tashkil. It was simple, just two fonts and tashkil. And I think you guys can do it. You want to give it a try? All right, go ahead. I want you to start. I told you, I gave you it's the the font, the Arabic font, and the the Indian English font is this one. It's also you guys have stole it. It's right there. The circle is made out of literally just the line made into a circle. Or you can do something easier, which is a circle. Move another circle and just subtract the circle from the circle and link it again. Go. Hala, for uh, don't worry yourself about these lines. Worry yourself about first of all just writing this margin that the gene you can always get it easily, like the way I did with the eye. Okay, the gene is like this. Take the khat, the gene, make, make it a khat, but take it from the khat. I'm going to keep this open. And by the way, this is not hard because uh, there's no changing of letters. The design, the, the design is like that. It's easy because the draft sometimes takes another tall. You're right. The mean is the mean design. I think it's which one I use. Yeah, it's the mean zain, and what I did is just remove that zain that left with the zain. You guys all that might be might be giving you a new friend font because I don't think that's the right font. Yep, this is the right font. I'm gonna post it now, just download it. I'm gonna give you that. This font is made out of three fonts, and I remember the regime is still different because the meme zang is, uh, is, a, is a Persian font. For the time being, start, uh, start with the G, the with my G part, this part. This is the G, yeah. 